Hey friend, I'm Mike McCurry. This is Bible Tract Echoes. Thank you so very much for tuning in today. All this week, we've been listening to a phenomenal message preached by Dr. Paul Levine, the founder of this ministry. And I realize I talk about him a lot, but I want to hold up the arms of those that came before. I want to hold up the banner and say these were some good men, some good women that did wonderful things for the cause of Christ. This is not hero worship. It's just, I believe, honor to whom honor is due. And so we've got Dr. Paul on the radio once again today. And we're going to, today and tomorrow, finish up this wonderful message on the will of God. I've got a question for you. How long did you enjoy yourself? How long did you enjoy yourself? Yesterday on the program, Dr. Paul ended with just a staggering illustration, thinking about Adam and Eve and what they had to deal with as a result of leaving Eden, the sweat on their brow, The the pain of childbirth, yes. Thinking about wiping up the blood of a son after their other son killed him. What a hard thing. All because they left Eden. How long did they enjoy the bite of that fruit? Well, its bite lasted longer than they intended because it bit them back. They lost so much. How long will you enjoy what you are in right now? Today, we begin with another illustration by Dr. Paul about Samson. And again, we ask, how long did you enjoy yourself? Listen now to Dr. Paul from many decades ago, preaching the truth that still applies today. Well, the fellow down here, hey you, what's your name? My name is Samson. What are you doing? I'm uh, hitched up to this mill. This is a big mill that they usually hitch the animals to and I'm grinding grain for my enemies. What's wrong with your eyes? Looks like you got, like you need a pair of glasses or something. Something haywire with your eyes? Yes, as I'm blind. Oh, what happened to your eyes? The gang got me. They did. What did they do with you? Boy, they took a red hot poker and poked my eyes out. You don't have any eyes? That's right. No eyes. Going anywhere? No, just in circles. That's all. I just go in circles all day. Round and round and round and round and round and round. I don't, I, I never get anywhere. I just go round and round and round. That's all. No eyes. Samson, how come you lost your eyes? What was it that brought on this tragedy in your life that you lost your eyes and you're a captive and you're a slave of your enemies? And he says, I crossed over the line of the will of God by, well, how'd you do that? How did you step over the line of the will of God? Number one, I dishonored my parents. I saw a girl one day and I said, hey, I'd like for you to get that girl for me for a wife. And my dad and mother said, now, wait a minute. She's not the one for you. God has not allowed us to intermarry with that crowd. And you're not supposed to have her. And I I was very impudent and smart alecky. And I said to my mother and dad, I told you I wanted her, didn't I? You know, a lot of young people are doing that. They do what they want to do at home. They don't care what their mother and dad says. They make their own decisions. And they defy their mother, and they defy their dad, and they disobey their parents. And they do it every single day. And God displeased with that kind of business. And the thing that got Samson into the mess that he's in, he wanted the wrong girl. He said, I wanted the wrong girl. And to get that wrong girl, he had to defy his parents. He had to disobey his parents. He had to dishonor his parents. How long do you enjoy yourself with that girl? Not very long. How long are you going to be blind? All my life. That's the way it goes, young people. Stay inside the lines of the will of God. It's it's pleasant there, but you step over, and you're stepping into sorrow, and you're stepping into trouble, and you're stepping into tragedy. Hey, let's go to a... You say that just happens to to common ordinary people? No, it happens to everybody. Let's go to a palace and see. Here's a king over here. And, uh, hey, what's your name? Well, I'm King David. How come you cry so much, David? You cry a lot, don't you? You're not a sissy, are you? No. I'm a warrior. I'm the guy that killed Goliath. You know that, don't you? Yes, we know that. You killed Goliath. We know you're not a sissy, but you cry a lot, don't you? How come you cry so much, David? Well, David says, I'll tell you why. He says, you know, one of my sons raped his half-sister. That's one reason I cry. There's immorality in our home. Then something else... Another one of my sons killed his brother who had raped the sister. We got murder in our home. 
Oh, me. You got immorality in your home, and you're crying about it. Yes. You got, you got murder in your home? In your family nest, you got murder? Yes. I cry over that. And that isn't all. He said, you know, um, he said, um, now I had another son, and, and he tried to take the kingdom away from me. He actually tried to take away the kingdom from me. And he, and then finally, they, they, we had a battle, they had a battle, they finally, they finally killed him. And my son Absalom is dead. And he said, I just can't keep from crying. I think about my little girl raped. I think about the brother who killed the guy that raped her. I think about my other son who tried to take the kingdom. And he says, in my home, there is immorality. In my home, there is murder. In my home, there is deceit. Whoa. What brought all that on, David? Well, he said, uh, I'm just reaping what I sowed. I stepped over the line of the will of God one day. I saw a girl, a woman I shouldn't have. There's immorality in my home, but I sold it back there. I saw a woman I had no business, business lusting after her. I saw her uh, when she was taking a bath on her housetop. And I sent for her. And I brought her to the palace. And I sinned with her. And we had a baby. And then he said, now listen to this. Then he said, I tried to cover up my sin by having her husband come home from the battlefield. What's that? That's deceit. You see, he's going to make it appear that when, the, when, the, when he found out that this, this, this guy's wife is, is going to have a baby, calls her husband back from the battlefield, so everybody will think that when the baby is born, it's her husband's baby. All right, so the Zimmer, he's sowing immorality. He is sowing deceit. When that didn't work, he got this fellow drunk. And when that didn't work, he had that fellow murdered. Here's David. He's sowing immorality. He's sowing deceitfulness. He's sowing drunk, drink, uh, 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 drunkenness. He is sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing. And finally, he even resorts to murder. Now, what's he, what's he suffering now? He's suffering the same thing. He's suffering deceit from Absalom. He's suffering immorality in his home. He's suffering murder in his home. He's weeping and crying. Listen, David, ask, I want to ask you a question. When you stepped over the line of the will of God, how long did you enjoy yourself with that woman you had no business having? Not very long, David. How long are you going to cry? I'm going to cry all my life. I'll cry till I die. And he's not the only one going to cry. Listen, they're crying in the palaces tonight. They're crying in the mansions tonight. The rich people are weeping as well as the poor people. And all over this world, people are weeping in sorrow and tragedy and woe because they stepped over the line of the will of God and defied God. And they said, I'll do what I want to do. Don't you do it, young people. I just want to encourage you to get in the will of God and get inside the will of God and stay there. And enjoy the blessings that God has for you. You know, I've told it so often here at the Bill Rice Ranch, we always have a lot of new kids. So I want to tell for you new ones. I got a letter one day from a guy, and he said, um, I was at camp. And he said, I saw young people coming down those aisles to get saved, to give their lives to the Lord, to surrender to his will, to get right. I saw it. I saw them come. But he said, I didn't. I don't know why he didn't. Well, he's a rebellious. That's why he didn't. He might have been one of these wise guys that tried to impress the girls. Once in a while, you find a guy like that camp. You know, he's got some little chick standing beside him, and she looks up at him, you know. He's a real tough guy. He's got three hairs on his chest, so he lets his shirt open a little bit longer, and so everybody can see those three hairs, and he's a tough guy. He stands there, and he swaggers around, and and, uh, yeah, look at all those weaklings going down there. Look at all those weaklings coming down there, getting saved, getting right with God. I'm tough. No, you're not tough. You're, you're the weakling. He was the weakling. He was the one who wasn't man enough to do right. And he said, I saw them coming down those aisles to get right. But he said, I didn't. But he said, I wish I had. Because when he wrote me the letter, he was in the Kansas State Penitentiary at Leavenworth, Kansas. He stepped over the line of the will of God, and he got into a peck of trouble. If you want trouble, if you want sorrow, if you want tears, if you want anguish, if you want a wasted life, if you want a blasted future, if you want an unhappy marriage, if you want a life of drudgery and unhappiness, just step over the line of the will of God. But remember, there was a couple of three preachers at camp who lovingly warned you about that. Stay in the lines of the will of God, young people. It's pleasant there. You can ask a few people. It's been pleasant for me. 
been pleasant for these men, been pleasant for their wives. I know a lot of folks, oh man, if they had their life to live over, they'd do the same thing all over again. Get saved, dedicate their lives to God. It's been pleasant. Been so pleasant. Here's a fellow by the name of Joseph. Where are you? Hey, Joseph, where are you going? I'm going to the palace. What do you do there? I sit on the throne next to the king of Egypt. Boy, how'd you ever get to be that a big shot that you could sit on the throne next to the king of Egypt? He said, by staying inside the lines of the will of God. Here's a fellow by the name of Daniel, 127 provinces in Babylon, and they had a, a, a prince over each one, and then they had three princes over them, and he was a prince over those three. And you, and you say, hey, Daniel, how did you ever get to be such a big wheel in Babylon? He said, I just stayed in the lines of the will of God. Now, listen, young folks, you want joy, you want happiness, you want a good life, you want a happy life, you want your work to be good, you want your calling to be right, you want your right, right, right wife, right husband, right work, right everything. Just get inside the will of God and surrender your life to the will of God and let him work it out for you. You'll find out that God's will is personal. He's interested in you, and you'll find out it's perfect, better than anything you could ever dream up. And you'll find out it's pleasant, and you'll find out something else is priceless. Don't let anything rob you of it. Friend, I'll tell you. By personal experience, I'll tell you by the experience of many young people, many adults that I've had the opportunity to counsel and, and talk to, it's not worth it. To leave behind the will of God is personal will of God. He's got a will of God for each and every one of you. He's got a perfect will of God. He's got something laid out that's going to be so magnificent. He's got a pleasant will of God. It's going to be enjoyable to serve Jesus I'd encourage you, friend, it's not worth it to leave that all behind for the temporary pleasures. The Bible tells us there is pleasure in sin for a season. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. If sin was bitter at the beginning, if sin was hard, if sin was difficult, we might avoid it. But it's not. There is pleasure in sin at the beginning. There's pleasure in sin for a season. I'd encourage you with this fact. It's not worth it. If you are in sin right now, would you please leave it behind? Would you please come back to God? He has a perfect will for you. Tomorrow on the broadcast, we will close up this week of programming with Dr. Paul Levine, this blast from the past. We try to have Dr. Paul on an old message of his, maybe once a quarter or thereabouts. I'd encourage you to listen in tomorrow. Thank you so much for your listenership today. My prayer, as always, is that you have a great day for His glory. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample booklet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Eight, eight. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 130, Dwight, Illinois, 60420. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.